All right, so we're going to go imaginary numbers, and for the first question, first two questions, it's on simplifying. Now, you may have learned a little trick to do this um, pencil paper method, where you did your I one and one plus minus minus plus, and you took your exponent, and you had to always divide it by four. So if you look and see how many times four can go into 99, so well, let's see. Let's try, try 24. Okay, so the is 24 times, and then the big thing is that you figure out what your major is. And so people can only say, if you subtracted your major would be 3, and that tells you that we can use this little i cubed, which is really going to be a negative i. Now, you don't have to do that every time. I have to use calculator, it's way, way easier. So when you do your calculator, and if we do this process, some calculators are different than others, um, but this will work for everyone. We go to the math key, go over to NUM, and go down to choice three where it says I part. This kind of gets your calculator in the mode of do to match your numbers. If you get the I, you do second period, and then we do carrot, and we do I. Close parentheses, we're done. And you get the same thing, negative I, that you did before. You might have. Uh, you know, this, yeah, this calculator like just does it for you. I did, when I do the carrot, it like puts the carrot in front of you to think of it. Yeah, you went to four to ten, so you can write this at the bottom. Oh, yeah. to go down. Okay. Yeah, so you don't have to go that far. Okay, cool. No, that will get it right. So it's pretty easy to do it in your calculator and get our little negative eye. Now, if you get a chain of something or anything with higher exponents than just one on the eye, this is where your calculator is really helpful. Um, you can take it in all at one time. If you want. I'm going to do the same exact procedure. Then I just want to go with minus four. There's a fraction of four. Oh yes, you did. Okay, but okay. so if you go back and delete that little part, should be that minus two minus four. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's really easy. Use that math now. I part key much much better. No, but wait, why is that Now, um, the next one will be really easy. Once in a while, you get something like this. Just make sure anytime you see a negative under the radical, we cross it out and we put an i in front. So what it becomes is 2i radical 50 minus 3i radical 8. And then you want to break them down. So it becomes in like, what's the biggest number for the open 50? Uh, yeah. You guys remember operation? Mm -hmm. Most of you should have 10 I got up for 2. Perfect. Same thing here. 4 and 2. 4 and 2. 4 and 2. For our final answer, make sure when you guys are looking to add and subtract radicals, you need to have the same number under the radical to do so, which we do. So 4i radical 2 should be it.
Then we're going to go to the next one. Okay, the last thing we want to look at is if you might get some kind of operation with eyes, just make sure if you are subtracting a whole quantity, you know, what do you guys have to do with that negative? Good, distribute it through. Nice job. So whether you do copy chain sheet or distribute this negative through, make sure you guys remember to apply it. So it's like 9 plus 2i, then we distribute it through. Yep, and then minus. Good. And then from here, since we're now adding to tracking, we'll look for some like terms. So far, so good? Mm -hmm. So probably there's one imaginary question. Now we can stop They have a lot of this stuff come up lately, or like I'm also trying it's super easy. These are the ones that you just have got to make sure you get right. But they just straight ask you what's the conjugate of this? Mm -hmm. The only thing that you change. Yeah, but only in the middle stages. We only change. No, that's fine. And then the middle. Or not to get. So, really easy. But only the middle part of the change should still be able to find the guy. Just make sure you're careful to pick up the Oh, you were a parabola? Are you area of travel? Parallel ground, yes. Oh, yeah. Because we have to talk to everyone for We're not even talking about that. <laughs> right. So, some of these, um, I think 24 and 5 are like one that you the most on your exam, like recently. Um, when you guys are doing product of two terms, or a binomial times a binomial, what do you guys have to do with that? Well, the only person will have to be their conflict with each other. Oh, I thought it was wrong. Yeah, it's just foil. Yeah, we're foil for all these measures. So the first out of the So first, our. Especially with the last, but that's where we always get it. Squared. Negative one. Negative one. How's that right? Spoiler. That's fine. And you're right. Whenever we see an I squared, this comes up a lot. We want to cross it out, and it's like you're multiplying by a negative one. That's the way this whole thing. Right, so we're going to pile it in. That's great, great. You got it. Good job. That's four I. Awesome. Big part. Let's remember that. Little I squared, or even if you guys did something where you got an I cube or an I to A, you always want to reduce this. Yep. You've got this I. I is like that radical negative one and can't have the I in the bottom. So if you have two terms, you need to multiply by the conjugate and stuff. The time here is just change the sign only in the middle. And then the end is bottom, like down here. Yeah. That's okay. Okay, so we distribute to the top, you get a 6 minus 9y. And on the bottom, this is a case where if you want to do a whole foil, you can, but since these are conjugates, you just have to do first and last. So, we need 4, and then minus 9i squared. Okay, good. So, remember to use that 9i squared, it's not, it's not good. So, i squared becomes a negative 1. Okay, when you multiply now, this becomes 4, 13, yeah, 4 plus minus. So just watch out and hear that because you're doing negative, negative, it turns step plus. Okay. 
Yeah. So yeah, six minus nine i over thirteen. Yeah, we can't reduce something that goes into all three, so that is it. Now, one thing, just I'm going to go with this part. I mean, we can see the right answer here. I don't say anything. Um, let's put it here about a plus b i four. But you guys remember if they did want something like a plus b i four? But you guys had to take the 13 to put out the reasonable part. Mm -hmm. So it was like 6 over 13 minus 9i over 13. Mm -hmm. So just watch out for that. They say anything about a plus pi, they can't just split it up if they do ask you for that. Do we need to do it like that? Yeah. A plus pi form. Now, and it, I mean, if you could reduce some of these, then you could reduce parts of it. But they don't say anything. So usually they'll tell you leave an A plus B I form. Okay. You want to take one of these No! Oh, this is okay. It must have like. You know what? You can even do this part. Try this down. Sorry. Okay. So in the sum of 4 plus 5 I. A negative 3 minus 7 i is represented graphically in what quadrant does this sum lie? They like this kind of stuff too. Um, so sum. No, you can't graph that in there. You can't really graph them. But what I'm asking is if you took these two things, right, and you add them together, that should be your first step. What would you get? How do we graph a complex number? Yeah, you just take out the i, so it's like saying 1, negative 2. Yep, this is like what you want to graph, if that's what you want to think of. You just basically take out the i. So it'd be the same, goes over 1, down 2, somewhere in here. You could leave it as a point, this would be like 1 minus 2i. Or you might remember, do you want to see as a vector? Yeah. You come out to that point. We have to say, all right, we went over one, down two. Mm -hmm. This would be like. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys are awesome. That's good.